maybe I'll maybe I'll take it, move it out to YouTube, then move it back to my thing, and then do all the editing and push it back out. I don't know. If I win, I guess I have to, right? Uh, yeah. Obviously, I'm gonna. So I'm playing against Gore Storm. Pretty obvious. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this isn't great, but we're gonna have to keep it. So, the the line of play here is Thunderbird to block one of his things. Right. And yeah, then, it's like, oh, I see Polka. What's the only good thing for Polka? Gore Storm. Well, you can still Mono Ruby. Um, is pretty good still. The the Mono Ruby that basically runs like four as its top end with like two Zoltog. That's still still good. It's just people don't run it because it you know because of like Buccaneer and uh Time Ripple and other things like that that do pretty well against it. And Gore Storm is just one of those also that just you're at fourteen life and you're not safe. And you're lucky pulling in a Thunderbird, you haven't been drawing those too often, but getting a Thunderbird against Falcons is pretty solid. Yeah. So this should draw out removal if he has any, but that's the other thing about Gore Storm is it doesn't run removal. So I'd say that's that's another thing that the Mono Ruby um, aggro has going for it compared to Gore Storm is it has removal. Yeah, I was wrecking Gore Storm in that Hydrage deck I put together with the Hydras and the Heat Waves and Burns. Yeah. It wasn't, even, it wasn't hard at all. So we have to bounce this Mirror Knight so that way it doesn't buff... It buffs less things. It, it still buffs all of the Falconeer stuff, but yeah, I was like, I was if I'm on the play on four and I drop a Hydra, their turn four they drop Falconer. My turn five, they're still on the, they're still troop trauma, so I just heat wave, which clears out a lot of what they have. My Hydra gets bigger. I swing in with Hydra and Polka Power. Hydra. Hydra. It also takes his whole next turn to cast that guy again if he wants to. So we'll probably see a different card. Yeah, I'd, I would be Maybe, surprised. maybe not. Or maybe a yeah, fresh yeah. one. He's definitely, I mean, he doesn't have a burn. He would have burned that stupid bird by now, I think. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that, that's an obvious choice. I, mean, I would have rather burned it than done anything else. He would have held it. He wouldn't have played the, the Mirror Knight. Right. I mean, the bird by itself is a five-turn clock. That's one of the m most amazing things about it. It just doesn't block for crap. I feel like the guy you're playing at some point in his life met a mime that was just really rude. Kind mime. He's one of my viewers. Yeah. Is he in there now? He left. Um, because he was, he found out he was in my constructed. So, so I'm pretty stoked to see that he's in here. I don't know that it's necessarily due to my tutelage. I'm sure he's a good card player beforehand. But oh, this is just mean. That's just mean. I really like it when people leave the stream, whatever, because you're playing. It's just kind of cool and respectful. Yeah, I agree. This is like the perfect curve out to deal with this. Yeah, no doubt. That's You're... mean. That's just mean. Now, I could have played the Thunderbird and held, um, but I really, really, really don't want uh, Falconeer to get the Falcons to get the buffs off of that guy, so that's why I did right. that. No, that's um, a good move. Falconeer cool. would, will still get the buff off of it in the following thing, but the Falcons won't. So right, if, right. If he has Falconeer, though, he's playing it this turn, realistically. Which means that I can, I can grok, but I'm, I'll probably I might want to just. Uh, but he doesn't have anything if he's playing that mirror knight again. Right. He really doesn't have anything. Mirror knight doesn't match up well against Buccaneer. Yeah, you're, you know, I'm an amazing you're, board state right now. Yeah, you're mastery of time away from just shredding him. Yeah. Entirely. So we'll play Chosen Thunderbird here in our second main phase. And I'll Grok next turn. So, uh, knowing that he's probably Gore Feast and such, are you going to add more, like, Thunderbirds or anything? Um, yeah, I'll probably go lower on my uh, curve. Yeah. Just 
probably what I'll do. I can't run like yeah, there's no reason to run things like chaos key. That would be silly. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's just too expensive. That's not gonna happen. You'll never get it off. But I do run four um uh, of the two point removal artifact that comes in. That came in before. Yeah. Yeah, Gore Storm is just one of those things you have to be prepared for just because it's so cheap to build, and so the field is going to be flooded with it. I got a playset of Gore Feast just from drafting. Oh, that's sweet. Gore Feast is the easy card to get to, though, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, I, I knew he was playing Falconer here, so it doesn't matter because I just crawl can win here. I, I was just too far ahead. Yeah, Gore Feast isn't bad. Like, I'm only sitting on one Vampire whatever. I've pulled no angels in all my drafts I've played, which is just ridiculous. I think he should have played the Falconeer last turn, actually. But I agree, yeah. Like, the, the Mirror Knight's not consequential at this point. Like, I'm not going to sweep him out. That's not what my deck does. It doesn't sweep at all. It just it just says, I don't care if you're there, I'm just going to exhaust you. Yeah, like, I don't know why he'd keep continuing to play it. Like, what's even popping? What's even... What is he hitting it off of? Like, well, I mean, you can block with things and draw cards, but... So, obviously, Time Ripple's really good here, and then Sapper's Charge is really good. We could play Phlox, but uh, Mirror Knight's probably better just to block that early stuff. So we need to bring our curve down. Um, probably the Splinters is not great here. Uh, we want Grog. Let's see, I need to get rid of four more cards. Ancestor's Chosen isn't the greatest here. Dreamer is okay. I'm going to get one of one Grog. Mastery Time's kind of a good. Oh, Counter Magic. That's. Yeah, let's go down to three. I only have one Mastery Time in my collection. I really need to get to four. Yeah, I kind of wonder, are they going pretty pretty expensive on the auction house? Yeah, like three or four bucks. That's five really good. Five. for. The, I mean, they're legendaries. I mean, that's that's the thing. Bucks. They're five by now. They, well, I can't imagine being one five. Maybe I should go with more Ancestor Shows. If I lose this, I'll probably side in more Ancestor Shows and get rid of more um, counter magic. Construct is like my thing, but I mean it's like most people's thing. Uh oh, this is not it. Nope. <laughs> this is a nope. They're all night. Twenty five shards and I'm doing this. All night. Ugh, this isn't great, but we'll we'll stick with this. We've got the sappers charge for the early uh Falconeer. Yeah, I've got a deck with twenty two shards and I don't I don't have the problems you do at twenty five. Yeah. And oh, of course well. your next hand is Four, so yeah, they're they're, they're nice. definitely there. <laughs> yeah. All right, so that and then that, and unfortunately, like if he does play a mirror knight, I do. Well, do I need to sapper charge the mirror knight? Probably need to sapper charge the falconer more than the new mirror knight. Actually, in this setup, like if I was playing, uh, if I was playing the Blood Diamond control, then yeah, you want to hit that Mirror Knight. So, but uh, because I just basically don't care if my opponent plays things, because I tap it all down or just bounce it, doesn't make that much of a difference. You know, it's when I don't bounce things that's when there's problems. Right. So I could respond to this Pyromancer if he plays another thing, but I probably won't. I'll probably just take the two, and then if he plays something else, just let it go through because I'm waiting for him to get to four to play that um, Falconeer, because that's like the biggest problem for me in this deck to deal right, with. Right, and the Sapper's Charge pretty much... Plus I get to Buccaneer something next turn anyway, so... Just take the two, obviously. Second main phase, I ex expect to see a troop of some sort, maybe a... I don't know, He probably he's probably playing Buccaneers in his deck. Or Reginald, okay, whatever. So I just bounce, what? bounce Reginald, I guess. He probably sided him in. Because he knows he can get him through. 
I could have Sappers charged Ruby Pyromancer in response there, but again, I'm waiting for uh, waiting to deal with it more eloquently. He got, he got killed by Reginald on turn six once. It was absolutely ridiculously bad luck. I think he's a, he thinks that I'm going to draw lots of cards with this deck, and this deck actually doesn't draw cards like at yeah, all. Let him let him play with that Reginald for a little while. <laughs> Just go ahead, keep trying. Uh, he swings in with Pyromancer. I'll make the trade here. That's a good call. The two two doesn't do anything. You're not like you're. You don't have a mirror knight out. You're not. There's no gain from it staying there. It doesn't do anything. Stops that stupid guy from buffing. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't think he was gonna swing. However, I will. Actually, place, do I play Splinter here? I don't think Alexander I want. Plays. I don't want that Alexander out. I just had a yeah. Bounce yeah, because you're looking. He goes Alexander. Then next turn, Reginald. Reginald can swing. Yeah, exactly. Forced to deal with a Reginald. Plus, he'll play uh, plus he has Poke Power up too now. So if he has Gore Storm, I mean that could be a lot of damage. Mm, mastery of time. I'm I am down a card here. Right. My little hold. Because of my mall. It's a really big Lord Alex. I can trade it for Splinter. I can still block his Reginald. He can still replay him. It's, I don't know. I feel like Master of Time is the thing I want to do here. Maybe. No. Mm. What do you gain from doing it? Yeah, exactly. I know he's going to swing. Yeah, you're either forced to double block or chump. I mean, you're sitting on two mastery at times. It's got to be yeah, let's just play, play the splinter here and let's see how much damage can I do. That's two, three, four, five, six, seven. Twice, three times. So actually, if he does swing here, I'm fine as long as I don't top deck the. Uh, as long as I don't top deck the Reginald on one of these. Which the chances of that are somewhat low. Right. So I guess I just take all the damage and then just try to mastery time for the win here. Makes sense. Yeah, I think that that's. We'll just do it that way. He's obviously not going to gore feast. And you're literally just gambling on that Reginald not coming back. Yeah. Well, okay, so what's the math now? So the math now is he can trade, I can deal five over three turns. That's not enough. I can Sapper's Charge, but I have to. I can't Sapper's Charge a time. Hopefully, I can draw into a shard. So the so the, it's the gamble is if I can draw into a shard. It depends on if he. Um. You know, what, I'm just I'm gonna gamble here. I have I'm up a game, so I'm gonna make the gamble here. We'll see what happens. So I'll take no ten. Guts, no, no guts, no glory. Yeah, exactly right. You know, you want to have fun. Yeah. <laughs> He's got to be listening to me now. All right, so we'll see what happens here. Okay, so I have the shard now to do it. Why? Oh, I. Why did I draw all these cards? I'm not sure why I drew all those cards. What happened? I'm not sure why I just drew all those cards. Oh, oh, Reginald goes off and does that draw thing. Oh. Oh, because he dealt damage to me, or something. Right. And it tries to get that Reginald out faster. Yeah, I played a guy who had a Reginald mill deck, and yeah, I was not impressed. It's yeah, it's not, it's not fun to play against that. So we'll see if he makes a block here. 
So that's why we play our mastery time, the second main phase. We want to be very careful here because we really need this to happen for us. Right. Yeah, that's our mastery time. We only have one resource left, so we might as well dump it into a sapper's charge here. Yeah, because you're going to get an extra turn where you're not going to sapper's charge, and you can run off all three sapper's charge for six damage. Well, there's that option, I guess. Um, yeah, I suppose that would also win. So we're going to see if we draw this Reginald at some point in time here. I think he's gone. Yeah, it looks like good games. I mean, unless I draw the Reginald here in the next turn, which is very possible. But the Sapper's charges are... Actually, let's see, that's three, four, five, six, seven. Even if he kills one, I have five more damage on top of seven would be 12. So, yeah, even without the Sapper's charges... He's bound. Well, yeah, unless Reginald. Unless I draw Reginald here, so which is very... I mean, at 44 cards, it's a 1 in 44 chance. Right, right. So, very good chance of that happening here. Um, so, I guess we'll end our step and then go to our next turn. This is, I'm nervous. Okay, good. So that, Reginald Gambit. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what it is, so... Yeah, good games. So there you go, my first eight man, pretty much just owned with uh, the Mono Sapphire Tempo. I'll go over the deck here in a minute. Stuff, but anyways, okay. So it it pre-sided the deck, so I gotta fix it. But main deck is four Ancestor Shows, and these Sappers Charge are in the reserves. Two Thunderbird main deck, two Mirror Knight main deck. I think I'm running three Time Ripple, four Buccaneer, four Counter Magic, four Elder Streamer with the card drawing, uh, four Splinter, four Medicine Grulk, and four Mastery of Time. And this gives me a really a pretty decent um, curve, except for my five point range. But Grulk and Mastery of Time are just so ridiculous; you kind of have to run it. Uh, on the reserves, I've got. Um, the three Chaos Keys, the two Flock of Seagulls, which I'm not sure I actually even really want here. Um, the, what else? The two Storm Colossus and the Eternal Guardian, and of course those four Sappers Charges, which are pretty important. Um, the four Sappers Charges are a must, I'd say, in the, in the reserves. We saw them come into play versus Gore Storm quite a lot. Uh, uh, yeah, Sapper's Charge is one of the best answers to Gore Storm. This Chaos Key is here to answer Soul Marble for the most part. Um, it's actually a pretty good budget deck, too. You're looking at Mastery Time being the most expensive card. That's not so bad. It's Actually, this deck is, is a lot of rares. I mean, you, you've got four Ancestors Chosen, four Mirror Knights, which is probably going to be one of the most expensive cards in the set. Like, that's a, a rare card. Yeah, um, it's still at 450 range right now. Yeah, it's mostly because it's not as good as, like, Totem. Like, Totem is probably worth more. Um, the four Elder Streamer, is, and the, the Menacing Grawlk is going to pick up in, in value. Um, yeah, I'm still getting them on the cheap. I just picked up my third one. It was, I found someone had one up for, like, a dollar fifty. Mastery of Time, of course, is somewhat expensive, but... Um, uh, Eternal Guardian is pretty cheap. I don't know if you necessarily need this guy. Actually, I probably should have sided this in against uh, the uh, Blood Diamond control because he kind of locks up the board state and they have they could have a hard time dealing with him. Storm Colossus definitely comes in on that match.